Hi, right. Um, anatomy of the femoral nerve. Um, this is a nerve largely of the anterior thigh. So I think, I think what we'll do is we'll do, what does it do? Where does it come from? What's its root? You know, where does it go? Branches. And then what happens if you injure it, bits of it? Does that sound sensible? I, I feel sensible. All right, we'll do that. You're still here, good. Okay, femoral nerve, what does it do? Um, well, as I said, primarily a nerve of the anterior thigh, right? When you're learning um, musculoskeletal anatomy and nerves and that sort of thing, it is, it is really complex and there is a lot in here. Nerves are really important. Nerve function is really important because loss of function is important and you need to know what's going on, right? So when you're learning the nerves of the limb, break it down into compartments. So for example, when we think about the thigh, femoral nerve, anterior compartment, sciatic nerve, posterior compartment, obturator nerve, medial compartment, and so on and so on, right? So, because then if the nerve doesn't work, then you know, what you know what's in that compartment, and you know what functions will be lost. So that's a general rule. So I often say the femoral nerve is the nerve of the anterior compartment of the thigh. So its big job then is going to be innovating the quadriceps femoris muscle. Quadriceps femoris is, <laughs> I can't get my knee. Quadriceps femoris is largely the extensor of the knee. So it pulls on the tibia and extends the knee. Um, part of it also crosses the hip joint, so it is also a hip flexor. It will flex the hip like this. So it innovates all the parts of the quadriceps, that is rectus femoris, that's the bit that crosses both hip and knee joint, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and the bit that's under there, the vastus intermedius, the bit in the middle. Uh, this is the sartorius muscle running across the anterior thigh. This is involved in hip flexion and it kind of helps with movements around here. Sartorius is also innervated by the femoral nerve and pectineus or pectineus, depending upon what you prefer, is a muscle that runs from um, the pubis to the femur. So pectineus runs from the pubis across to the femur, um, which means that it can aid hip flexion and hip adduction. So pectineus is also innervated by the femoral nerve. Moving up in here, um, so there's the, the wing of the ilium here. This muscle here is iliacus and it's crossing the hip joint and that is innervated by the femoral nerve. And now we can see the femoral nerve, there it is. This is the inguinal ligament while we're here, by the way. Iliacus is also innervated by the femoral nerve. Uh, and that is it for motor function. This muscle here is psoas major. It doesn't innervate psoas major, we'll talk about that in a moment. I think that's it. So then, uh, the femoral nerve is important in hip flexion, but is not solely responsible for hip flexion and is important for extension of the knee. All right, so, you know, we jump into the end, but loss of function means that you wouldn't be able to extend your knee. Okay, now, where does it come from? If those are motor functions then, what are its sensory roles? Um, similar area. The femoral nerve will carry sensory information from the anterior thigh, from the medial thigh, and also the medial knee, medial leg, medial ankle, maybe, maybe even as far as the medial foot. So it has a sensory role as well, um, which exposes my lie when I say, oh, the sciatic nerve does the posterior compartment of the thigh and then everything distal to the knee. There's always an exception, right? So, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it rememberable. There's always more detail. So there is a sensory nerve um, from the femoral nerve that carries sensory information back from the medial leg. And we'll talk about that. Something else that's kind of relevant, um, pretty much any nerve that crosses a joint will innervate that joint. And um, what we're really talking about, so we've got the hip joint here, the knee joint here, these are synovial joints. So the articular cartilage doesn't have any nerves in it, but the synovial capsule does. So a lot of uh, pain from joint disease is felt via the synovial capsule. And also we have proprioception, right? We understand where our 
joints are in space without having to look. You can pick up a cup of tea without looking because you know where your arm is. So there, are, there is sensory, sensory information being conveyed back from the joint capsule of the hip and the knee by the femoral nerve. But those joint capsules will also send sensory information back through sciatic nerve and obturator nerve at the hip, sciatic nerve and obturator nerve at the knee, although by the time we've got to the knee, the sciatic nerve has become the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve. Anyway, you get my point. The femoral nerve is also involved in sensation from the joints themselves because it crosses the hip and the knee. All right, squirrel that one away. Where does it come from? Um, it comes from the lumbar plexus. So the lumbar spinal cord um, gives out spinal nerves at levels L2, L3 and L4 and they become, <laughs> that's this bit here, right? They become the femoral nerve. We'll talk about that in a moment. So that means that this is, this is L5 here. So the lumbar um, vertebrae are posterior to this bit here. So that means that those spinal nerve roots are posterior to all of this. This here is psoas major. This lovely chunk of muscle here, which is also going to cross the hip joint. And I said that psoas major isn't innervated by the femoral nerve. So the lumbar plexus is deep to psoas major. And psoas major will be innervated by branches just running from the lumbar plexus into psoas major and innervating it. The femoral nerve is gonna, it, it's posterior to psoas major. And as we descend, we haven't got it here, but here's iliacus, here's psoas major. The um, femoral nerve will appear from the lateral border of psoas major inferiorly. And then we'll see it just before it runs deep to the inguinal ligament. The inguinal ligament is the connective tissue running from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubis. And it's a connective tissue that kind of ties everything down and separates the abdominopelvic cavity, separates the trunk from the lower limb and the femoral nerve is going to go deep to it. Okay, this here, this is the lumbosacral plexus, this is the sacral part, this is the lumbar part up here. So a plexus is, is um, cabling, it's wiring, it's an organization of these wires and think of the individual fibers in here, the, the axons of the neurons running from the spinal cord to a particular target and if they're all going to the same place as another group of neurons then they'll bundle together and go there together, right? So um, L5, L4, L3, L2, L1, those are the five lumbar vertebrae and between the vertebrae there is an intervertebral foramen and out through that intervertebral foramen passes a spinal nerve. So this is a mixed nerve, it's motor and sensory, and we're gonna number these L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, inferior to each vertebra. So the femoral nerve, I know which one it is already, it's this one here in yellow. So we have yellow and green here because we have like anterior branches and posterior branches, but that's for another day. The femoral nerve is formed from spinal nerve roots coming together to form the femoral nerve. Um, and it runs inferiorly, as I said, so we've taken the muscles off, but it's posterior to psoas major, and then it appears, and here's the inguinal ligament here. So it's gonna run deep to that to get into the thigh. Okay, now, from what I've just said, yeah, we can work out what we're looking at. There's the iliacus muscle. Here's the psoas major muscle. Here's the femoral nerve then, as I said, it's appearing, right? It's appearing lateral to the psoas major muscle inferiorly. It innervates iliacus. This is the inguinal ligament. Um, it will pass deep to the inguinal ligament at its midpoint. Whoops, <laughs> the midpoint. Th there are some rules about how we measure this, but yeah, so um, halfway along the inguinal ligament, the femoral nerve runs deep to the inguinal ligament and passes into the anterior thigh. And we can see here that it meets its friends, the femoral artery and femoral vein. And this 
is the, the femoral triangle. So it passes into the femoral triangle. This is a very superficial area. This is an area where you can access these blood vessels. So this is an area where we might be putting needles into things to do various tasks. So we need to know that the femoral nerve is lateral to the femoral artery. You can palpate the pulse of the femoral artery here. You know the femoral vein is medial, the femoral nerve is lateral. The femoral artery and vein are in the femoral sheath which is a connected tissue tube connecting this space and this space. The femoral nerve is not. It's doing its own thing and it's running into the anterior thigh. Um, so it innervates pectineus or pectineus and then here's the sartorius muscles where so it innervates sartorius and it's also going to innervate quadriceps femoris. That's its motor job. And look, we can see branching happening already as soon as we get into I've taken the sartorius muscle which, off, which isn't very helpful if I'm trying to show the femoral triangle. Femoral tri triangle is sartorius, this border of sartorius, um, adductor longus, its border, and then the inguinal ligament, boom, boom, boom. So as soon as the femoral nerve gets into the femoral triangle, it divides into two divisions. There is an anterior division, also known as a superficial division, and there's a posterior division, also known as a deep division. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that the superficial division is going to give off um, the intermediate cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve that will carry sensory information back from the skin of the anterior thigh and will also give off the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh which is going to carry sensory innervation back from a medial region of skin of the thigh and it will also innervate this muscle that we've taken off it will also innervate sartorius that's a bit of a weird one because of what the deep branch does but the superficial branch will innervate sartorius the deep branch is going to go deep, which means it's going to go to the deep structures in the anterior thigh, which are the quadriceps femoris muscles. But it will also give off another branch, which we can see continuing here. So remember that I've taken the sartorius muscle off. Look, if we take the sartorius muscle off, we see this, this lovely groove, this, this canal this subsartorial canal or this adductor canal that we also see blood vessels running in to get to the posterior knee. And in here, the deep branch of the femoral nerve continues as the saphenous nerve. It's called the saphenous nerve because it's going to run medially and in the medial skin here, we find the great saphenous vein, a superficial vein of the lower limb, a super, super long vein covering the entire length here, running from the foot up to this blood vessel up here. And the saphenous nerve usually often runs closely with the great saphenous vein. So it has taken its name. The word saphenous means like, like, um, I think it is it ancient Greek for like, it's like obvious, it's like really visible, you can see it, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's like a really visible thing. So the great saphenous vein, um, if the valves fail in it, uh, because of the tall column of blood, that is one of the superficial veins that can form varices, as in the vein distends and folds and becomes very wiggly and obvious. So the great saphenous vein, and there's a short one posterior to the calf, the great saphenous vein can be very obvious. The saphenous nerve runs with the great saphenous vein part of the way. So the saphenous nerve then is going to run down the medial knee, medial leg, medial ankle, medial foot. Um, the femoral nerve has done its motor jobs now. That's all dealt, dealt with. The saphenous nerve has just got sensory jobs to do. So as it passes the knee, it sends off a branch to the skin anterior to the patella. Um, and as it continues, it will then carry sensory information back from the skin of the leg. Remember, anatomically, when we say leg, we mean the bit between the knee and the ankle. Um, and it will also carry, you know, sometimes some sensory information from the anterior skin of the leg. But we're overlapping at this point with other nerves down here. And then, you know, continues down to the end to the medial ankle, medial foot. And it's, you know, it's the medial ankle that you might be familiar with the great saphenous vein, because this is the medial malleolus here, and we can find it around here. This is an area that has very little subcutaneous fat, it's very bony. There's nowhere for the great saphenous vein to go and hide. So around here we can find it. 
all of that means that when you're doing things with the saphenous vein, the great saphenous vein, you need to think, ooh, the saphenous nerve is nearby. Okay, clinical stuff. <laughs> to be honest, when I, when I teach the femoral nerve to medical students, I don't, I don't tend to go past the knee. We just talk about that bit, oh, and the, and the saphenous nerve. I tend to save it for postgraduate teaching teach anaesthetics, that sort of thing. Um, all right, so what, how might we damage it? Well, the femoral, okay, ooh, no. First of all, how might you test femoral nerve function? You, you might know this, right? Okay, so um, there are a number of tendon reflexes that we use to test peripheral nerve function and the function at spinal cord levels, right? And there's a fairly famous one where you tap the patella tendon and you look for the quadriceps contracting and maybe the the lower you know the knee extending a little bit right so the patella tendon test what you're doing here is when you tap the patella tendon so the this is all nicely relaxed hanging over an edge and tap uh, what you're doing is you're stretching the muscle and that those stretch receptors then send that sensory information back up the femoral nerve to the spinal cord primarily at the l4 level and that triggers a reflex arc at the L4 level, and then motor fibers down the femoral nerve run to the quadriceps femoris muscle and cause it to contract if the femoral nerve is working. So if the femoral nerve has been severed above this point and you do a patella tendon test, the reflex will be absent, all right? So you can test it. Um, yes, other things are happening in that reflex and what have you, but that is the general idea. So how might it be injured? Well, the femoral triangle here is the most superficial point of the um, femoral nerves. So that's when it's at greatest risk of injury. So a penetrating injury, penetrating trauma here. Um, otherwise, it's kind of protected by the muscle, but nonetheless, a deep penetrating injury could damage the femoral nerve. Um, so actually, it's quite safe. It's fairly uncommonly injured. It can be injured during surgery. We were talking about how it sends branches to the hip joint and the knee joint, which means that surgery to the hip joint and the knee joint could damage branches of the femoral nerve. To be honest, hip surgery doesn't tend to go anywhere near it because it doesn't take an anterior approach, but it can do. Uh, knee, uh, you know, surgeons are pretty good at anatomy. They know where these things are. They know how to avoid them so as not to injure them. It's not always possible, but they try because they're very good. Um, but yes, so the, the, fem the, the saphenous nerve and its branches at the knee could be injured by surgery to the knee. And as I alluded to earlier, if you are looking to access the, the great saphenous vein, well, the saphenous nerve is nearby. So you could damage the nerve by missing the vein. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's a pretty happy nerve. But that's the anatomy of the femoral nerve. It comes from the lumbar plexus at L2, L3, and L4 spinal nerve roots. It appears lateral to psoas major, passes deep to the inguinal ligament and into the triangle, uh, the femoral triangle, gives off the two, the superficial and deep branches, innervates these muscles here that we talked about and sends a sensory branch, the saphenous nerve, down the, the medial knee and medial leg. Oh, it's probably the longest nerve in the body, isn't it? If you think, so it, it's certainly the longest nerve of the lumbar plexus, it's probably the longest nerve in the body. If it's going from here all the way down to the, the foot, sciatic, because the sciatic nerve is just a little bit lower. Sciatic nerve is really big, but that's like got sacral roots as well and lower roots, and that goes, I wonder. I don't know. <laughs> I feel, okay, maybe, maybe that's a useful fact, an interesting factoid. Right, um, the anatomy of the femoral nerve, done. Uh, see you next week.